Hi everyone! So today I wanted to focus on doing the next card in our tarot, kind of the Living Arcana, Major Arcana series. Um, I've done the card of the Fool and I've done the card of the Magician. I said Musician. And I, now I want to do the High Priestess. So for in, in any of my descriptions on these, I kind of explain a little bit about, you know, how the Fool's journey progresses, where the Fool comes into existence. And the Fool is the very beginning of the tarot series, the very beginning of this progress and this personal development journey that we're on. He comes in, he's a, not even a card number one, he's a card zero. And he has no, he has no experience, which is a good thing and a bad thing. He has no, no knowledge of what to be afraid of. And he has no past trauma, but he also has no past wisdom or experience at all. So that's something and that's where we start. Then we learn that through our action and our interaction with the rest of the world around us, anytime we touch something, it has a reaction. We push something, it, it moves back. We, anything that we do has an impact on the world around us and we can viscerally and um, visibly see what that is. The next card is the High Priestess. Not only are our actions physically, um, not only do they impact the world around us, but we also have an impact on this sort of etherical field upon which that we live. This like, and not even in a, I don't mean to say that in a cliche, like offhanded way, but I mean this literal matrix upon which that we are living our lives. That's the high priestess. She is the, the seer or the intuitor or the, the female version of the shaman where she is introducing to the fool, the parts of himself that are recognizing the things that are intangible yet readily available to us. We have the ability to to tune into patterns and to tune into archetypes and to recognize how things work around us on a way that's not necessarily so linear. You know what I mean? We have the ability to um, to tune into these more feminine aspects of intuition. And that's a lot of what this card vitally represents is our intuition and our ability to tune into this sort of spiritual magnetic everything that surrounds us and that is within us. So here are our cards. So I have uh, three primary uh, tarot decks that I work with. This is from the Witch's Tarot. This is the Wildwood Tarot. And this is the Deviant Moon Tarot. And as you can see, they are all very, very different, but they do have sort of like a similar iconography, which is the woman, believe it or not, it's a, it's a, it's a woman. <laughs> it's a little a little abstract, but it's it's pretty cool. Um, so it's a woman standing at her throne or under or, or outside of her throne. So this card initially, for anyone that's familiar with uh, tarot iconography, traditionally this kind of looks like the magician, where or the magician is standing in front of his altar and he has something of every element or something from every part of part of the tarot. So cups, wands, swords, and pentacles. But here she is standing at the altar that is or at this. She's standing at a pool of water. And water is traditionally known as a, obviously it's very reflective, but it can be something that you can bounce your intuition off of, and it can be used as a divination tool. And that's what this is. This is representing us being able to tune into the sides of ourselves that go beyond whatever we're able to prove right now. It's me being able to feel your energy from here, or me being able to feel my own energy, or me being able to tune into the idea that a friend of mine is hurt, or even just, or any of these things. Like, they don't even have to be necessarily distinct specific events that are like determined by you know being psychic or whatever it can just be the recognition that we are a part of something that is so much bigger than ourselves we are a part of something that is so vast and incomprehensible truly that we can only hope to have a small relationship with it and that's what this is us developing our relationship with this field and knowing that not only do, do our physical hands have an impact, but our spiritual energetic hands have an impact too. And that we can create the world around us through this co-creation, through this co-manifestation. So this is pretty cool. Um, so like I said, this is the number two in the tarot because it has the zero, the one, and the two. And she is just, she is the representation of divine femininity, but she's also She's known for her, for her ability to maintain a neutrality outside of all of this. So she is brought to the forefront to remind us that in order for us to have an equal and a proper impact on the world around us, we need to look at things objectively. And we need to look at what's coming from the other side of our personal opinion or other side of our personal perception. So she's not... That's why she's standing in the middle here. This is a pre pretty traditional um, description or depiction of how how the high priestess typically shows up. She's on her throne and she's holding um, she's holding lavender and she's holding a scroll. And this is where the scroll is. 
the ability to tangibly to understand knowledge through the study of knowledge, whereas the whereas the sage or the uh, lavender represents the application of that knowledge through wisdom. So not only are we able to put down on paper all the things that are a psychic, but we're able to put down on paper what our experiences of it are, what's the best way to go about doing something, and actual the applicability of it, not just being able to like on paper understand what something is. She is the matter between both of these. So as you look at her, she's standing between the white and the black pillar, and that's pretty traditional in showing duality. She is the card number two, and duality is always representative of left and right, not necessarily left versus right, not necessarily bad and good, not necessarily male or bad versus good, and not necessarily male versus female, but it's both. And it's having the ability to find the equal and opposite reaction and having the ability to find the positives on both sides and the negatives on both sides, whatever that means and for whatever circumstance. And this comes up in a reading, know that you are being asked to find a place of middle ground and a place of gray so that you're able to see the whole picture as opposed to just what you want to see. Okay. Anyway, you guys, go ahead and like and subscribe to my channels. You can find me on uh, Instagram as well under sailor.owen. And I look forward to doing the rest of these videos. And I look forward to seeing you at my Living Arcana class on the 21st. Thank you.